Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Natalie with Natalie's Closet. If you're new here, I would love to welcome you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, if you would be willing to, that would be awesome. Just hit the subscribe button down below and make sure to hit the notification bell to all so you're notified anytime I upload videos. Um, and welcome back to everybody, uh, all of my OGs, because I have some that have been here the whole five years I've been on YouTube. And then everybody else from then to now, I. Just welcome. I'm so happy you guys are here. Um, that being said, today's video is a market prep video um, for my market that's August 29th, uh, 2024. This is my first one in several years and my first one in Illinois. Um, that being said, I found, I'm part of this um, Facebook group that is designed for the Northern Illinois area and vendors, I mean, I'm sorry, people that are um, organizing vendor markets or markets and fairs and, and craft fairs and all that other stuff will post about their fair in this group. And then you can go ahead and, you know, find it and then comment or whatever the directions say on how to contact the organizer. And so um, this one happened to pop up and I was like, okay, but it was like two weeks away and I'm like, okay, but I don't have anything. I mean, yes, I had made a couple of hats online, you know, with you guys and, and, and I had a couple of things that were from a long time ago, but otherwise I didn't have anything for a market. I didn't have all the plushies and the lovies and the everything else. And I'm like, and it's two weeks away. And Mr. Boyfriend's like, yeah, I know you can do it. And I was like, okay. So I went ahead and I signed up. Um, and so I had two weeks to make enough to, sell at a market and uh not necessarily enough where there was a lot of back stock so that if i sold stuff i can replenish it but um and i'll tell you a little bit about you know uh well actually i plan on maybe i'm gonna try to record while at the market so that i can add it on and then i'll do a quick recap i'm not going to go into a lot of details but at least let you know what's sold but so we'll do all of that and i'll let you know you know how how it turned out and what I put on the tables and stuff. But I am super excited because this is my first one. I have been looking for other ones to go ahead and um, book. Um, that being said, actually, no, let's just get into all the market stuff. So I'm going to show you everything that I had as well as everything that I made in two weeks. So one of the things that I had was this beautiful crocodile stitch baby blanket it's designed for it was it had been commissioned for a pram which is one of the flat um sh like strollers or for like stroller blanket but this is a superwash merino and nylon blend yarn it is a, a high-end blanket the yarn itself was 120 dollars so anyway, so that's this beautiful crocodile stitch blanket. I'm not going to go into a lot of details, but this is one of my pride and joys. Um, unfortunately, the commission uh, order didn't go through. And so I've had this for a little while and I was either going to give it away or gift it to somebody if there was someone that I knew that was having a baby that was, you know, super close to me or... Um, it was going to just wait until the proper or the person that was supposed to have it got it. So that was something I've already had. I also made this crocodile stitch baby blanket or um, stroller blanket a while ago. So that I already had. And then I had this headband, which I only had one, but I had this headband. I also this shawl I made for myself. But then I'm like, who am I kidding? I don't I don't w put extra stuff on. I'm always taken off because I'm always hot. So why am I making a shawl for myself? So I decided to sell it. I never wore it, but I decided to sell it. It's a shawl pattern by Expression Fiber Arts. It's the Adeline shawl. It's actually a pineapple. Um, there, there are pineapples in here, but because the yarn is so busy, which I wanted the yarn, it's called confetti. Um, I wanted the yarn and I didn't really, it, I was like, I really don't care for myself if you can see the stitch or not. Had I been planning on selling it, I probably would have picked a different pattern. But anyway, so it's a beautiful pattern. So I had this. Again, this is one of my higher end pieces. And when you have a market where, you know, when you build a market that um, that you can sell more expensive items to, then that's a great thing. And I had started to build that, but I'm now going to be building that here in Illinois. 
so that the yarn itself was like $90. So there's also my work and, and also a little bit of a markup. Um, and as far as pricing goes, um, normally I consider all of the, the price of all the material, retail price of all of the materials used, as well as um, I, I used to only charge like $10 an hour for my work. Now I'm like, no, let's do 20. Um, now, if it takes only half hour, it's only $10, but that goes on top of the retail cost of all the materials that are being used and then a little bit of a markup. Well, and, and I don't really have a formula for that. I just decide, okay, well, I think I can add $5 or I can add $10 or whatever. And then that way, if let's say at a market, things aren't selling and you're, you're feeling it's because of the prices, there's a little bit of wiggle room to go ahead and do that. But with that markup, you can always like reinvest into your business. Like the cost of materials, that is something that you can use to repurchase the yarn and the everything else that you need to remake those items. And then the markup you can always use, um, well, you could use it however you want to, but reinvesting in the business and getting more yarn so you can make more things or different things. I don't know, that's how, I, how I've always looked at it. But then this was a baby doll blanket. I've had this for a little while and I love the colors. Even though I'm not a gray person, I really love this one. Um, and then I also had, oh no, yes, I had this scarf. It was done with ribbon yarn. This I knitted. Um, and then I think, oh, and this one. This was um, Lion Brand Trellis yarn. It's like the ladder yarn. Um, I've had this for a little while. So that's all the stuff that I've had for, like I made a long time ago that I've still just had in my, in my um, finished object bucket uh, or bin or whatever. And then with you guys, I had made, or I, I we were making this in the car, a divine hat an adult for an adult. So I've got the divine hat, which I made prior to booking this in anticipation or in preparation for a market. And then I made these with you, I think, or I've already, but I know I've showed it to you. I had this hat. It was the beanie hat by um, uh, the Yarn Geek. Um, with this yarn, which I can't remember what it was, but it's a, it's an acrylic yarn. So that I had made with you guys. And then this one, you guys had already seen also, which is the same pattern. Um, and then this one, which again is the same pattern. So this was stuff I made leading up to booking this, um, this, uh, whatchamacallit, market. I did also make this one. I don't remember if it was online with you guys. It's sparkles. Can you see the sparkle? Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Anyway, um, I'm not selling him because he's just too cute. Uh, and I tried to remake him and oh my God, if you had seen what it looked like, I mean, seriously, this thing looked like it was all kinds of deformed. But I don't think I'm going to be selling this. If I did, it would be like $5. Um, and then I think that, oh no, I had made, I think seven of the loveys with you got or before or leading up to the market so i think i had like seven of those so i'm just gonna pull out like seven so i have this guy who's adorable this one this one which yeah um so that's three four i love him super cute he's a little bat um so that's that's four, five, this guy, which I double stranded the, the yarn. There's like a, a, like a shimmer yarn in there. Um, so that's five, wait, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. So then there was this one, which I double stranded this yarn too. This yarn was actually one that I got at my local yarn shop. Um, I, uh, I'm almost positive this one was like a, yeah, this was an acrylic. Um, and then this one, which I love. And I made this with um, uh, Sweet Snuggles, parf um, Sweet, uh, Sweet Snuggles, um, Loops and Threads, Sweet Snuggles. And so that one. So that's the seven that I had made. So now we, I've shown you everything that I had in preparation for the market. Everything else I'm going to be showing you was something I made within two weeks of having booked the market and when the market happened. I have this guy. I couldn't find the right orange, so I just did an orange, because he's a Halloween um, guy. Anyway, so I got that one. 
this one, which I know we're past like a lot of the like summer type events, but you know, maybe for New Year's or something. I, I don't know. Um, and then I have this Mickey, which I could have made it longer, the blanket longer, but in all honesty, I really liked it the way that this was. And, um, and I showed a few people and they were like, yeah, totally. Um, but Mickey, who's a, a larger stuffy, and then I've got Yoda. And I was like, do I make a black blanket? I mean, it's, you know, for kids, but yeah, totally. It had to be black or this is baby Yoda. But, um, and this was also made with sweet snuggles. So, okay, that's that. So what I made, loveys that I made within two weeks, there, there was the two of those, three, four. Okay, so there were four loveys that I made um, after um, having signed up for this market. Let me just put this all away really quick. The other stuff I may just go ahead and leave on the couch so I'm not wasting all your time putting stuff away. Uh, although we're about to have breakfast, so that may not be a smart idea, but I can throw it in there afterwards. I'll repackage this. Um, okay, so we saw the stuff, that stuff that was prior to, or during, after having booked it and the actual market itself. Now we're getting into the stuffies. Um, so I have this banana, which I absolutely adore. And the, the peel is actually sparkly, but so I've got this banana. Um, and then I have three pencils, which I thought would be perfect because of this one, like came out a little bit different. It's very strange. I did the pattern exactly the same, but, um, so I've got three pencils and then I made three cheeky frogs and they're big guys these are big frogs ribbit ribbit <laughs> my throat right now is ribbity um this one is a sparkle one but when i say cheeky they got cheeky butts <laughs> cheeky butts um cheeky butts cheeky butts uh so the cheeky froggies and I know that I used what looks like larger eyes than typically would be used, but I liked the larger eyes for them. And it's just super cute. <laughs> I love my cheeky frogs. And then I made a gummy worm family. Uh, the one pattern, uh, the one kind of came out funky. The dad kind of came out funky over here. I'm not exactly sure what happened but he he's still cute um so that's the dad gummy worm and he he should be different he's the dad right here's the mom <laughs> isn't that cute and i put the eyes where it said to put the eyes when making the pattern but there's the the mom gummy worm and then we've got the family or the kids so i just um you know swapped the yarns so super cute love my gummy worm family um and I kind of went for a different pattern and I found one and I'm happy about that. So the dad actually is a little bit smaller than the mom. So I guess it could be the other way around, but that's not the way it worked. And it was intention. It was, it's really weird how, what happened with that. I, I don't know. I counted the stitches. I don't think I was off, but whatever. It is what it is. Okay. So now I'm going to have to try to find all of these so that I can just show them all to you at once yeah because i made three of each of these guys which i know i should probably have more than that but these guys i honestly i honestly don't think because well, my plan is is once i have a market i'm going to go ahead and whatever i sell i'm go whatever i go to the market with i'm going to have as my baseline for my um inventory so when i go to the market i sell whatever then i replenish whatever i sold so that i could come back to square on what was my inventory 
and always at least have that baseline. And then obviously change things up depending on the season it is, add certain things, whatever. And then I obviously wouldn't remake it unless I have another show before that holiday happens. Does that make sense? So I think I have all of them. So I have all these stingrays. I've got the pink with the green belly. Oops, I have to add a smile to that one. But so I have three of these guys. And yes, my smile is thicker than would typically be, but that's okay. I like to be different. I have three of these blue with this little brown underside. Then I have three Ukrainian ones, blue with yellow. And yes, I wasn't necessarily making standard black smiles. If the top was blue, then the smile was blue on some of them. Some of them had a black smile. But anyway, then I had these like lavender ones with like this fun, like mint green kind of sort of. So I have three of those. All the eyes are different. Um, they are safety eyes and they are sparkly ones. I don't know if you can see the ring, the outside ring, but um, they're sparkly. So then I have three of these pink with yellow underbellies. Now, mind you, all of this stuff that I'm showing you from this bin and the few things that were in that bin and another bin are everything that I made in two weeks. Um, I literally, anywhere we went in the car, I was crocheting. Um, I was, what just happened to my ring light? Um, I was, my computer turned off, that's why. Um, I was crocheting until one, two o'clock in the morning, then waking up with Mr. Boyfriend when he got up in the morning um, at like 4.35, 6 o'clock. I mean, I was literally like crocheting all the time. Okay, my ring light is not going to come back on because my computer is being... Um, what is happening to my computer? I don't understand. Okay, guys, we're going to have to do it without my ring light, evidently, because my computer is not wanting to start completely. Okay, there we go. It's restarting. Anyway, so all of the time that any, any time, oh, overnight, um, I... Uh, during the day, like all day long, I was just crocheting like a banshee. It was, it was crazy. It literally, you know, and so many times I'm like, oh, I want to go to bed with Mr. Boyfriend or go to bed at the same time with Mr. Boyfriend. And then I'm like, no, nope, I gotta, I have to, I have to stay up. I have to crochet. I got to get this stuff done. And so I did what I had to do and, um, went from there. All right, I think I've got all of these because I just want to make sure that, okay, looks like I have everything. Okay, let me just sign into my computer because when I do that, it keeps it awake longer. Okay, so I have a, a four of each of these, cause I did, uh, four of these, and they're made with um, the... It's at Joann's. It's the, um, Rose would know this. I forget what the brand, what, what it is, but it's like a velvet yarn. So I have four of the purple or lavender. we got four of these mint green. I have four of these like neon yellow. They're seriously like stop traffic bright, which you all know. Um, I have three of these only because, um, the yarn got messed up and I wasn't able to get a fourth one out of it. It's a long story. Then there are four of these black ones and I know they're colorful, but you know what? And I know maybe that's going to be to my detriment because people like, you know, kind of bland colors, but I do, I, I decided I'm just going to make stuff that inspires me because I'm going to be able to sell it better and I'm going to have more pep in my step when I'm selling it. And then we went back for something and we saw the sparkle version of a lot of these colors. So I have four of those. Did I show you these? Yeah, three of those. And then I had ends. Like I had, I had a, like not enough to make another one, but enough to start another one. So I, I made different color combinations that were kind of wacko and off the wall, but I did a black and safety yellow one. I did a black and lavender one. The only thing is, is I really don't like changing colors at the band part because this is so um, slippery that, I don't know, anyway. So I did this mint green with the hot pink, this lavender and hot pink, and this one is actually my favorite and I may keep it. 
it's safety yellow. I used all I had, and then I had the lavender, and it started with the lavender, then it went to this, oh no, it was started with mint green, then it went to lavender, that went here, then it went to safety yellow, and then I had this pink. And in all honesty, I really seriously think I wanna keep this because I love it and I think it's amazing, amazingly adorable. Okay, then we went into my octopi. Now, um, I, I went different with mine. Not that I had any pro have any problem with the standard octopus with the little, like, I don't want to say nubs, but little nubs for the tentacles. Um, but it just wasn't my thing. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. So um, I had made one with you guys, actually. Okay, this was still with you guys. Um, that just has like these little nubs for the thing. Okay, fine. Oh, and I made him with you guys. So everything else, you know, besides these two, were, all of this I made in the two weeks. So I went ahead and, uh-oh, this one's not priced. Why don't I have a price on him? I don't know, but I have to find a price tag for him. So anyway, so these are my small ones, my small octopi. So I've got this little mint green one, and I've got these, these tentacles on it. And then remind me, when I do the recap... I think I, there was something I wanted to tell you guys about octopi, so you have to remind me. Then I got this little brown one, and I got this little blue one, and I got this little yellow one, and I got this little mint green. And it's funny because some of them worked up a little bit different, like the tentacles came out a little bit different, or longer, or shorter, or whatever. This pink one, which I love the tentacles on the, that one. <clears throat> then I have this lavender one, and this hot pink one. So those are my small octopus, octopi, sorry. Then I have my medium ones. Now, my medium ones were done, the little ones were done with Parfait Chunky, my small ones. My medium sized ones were done with Bernat Blanket. And it's funny because they kind of came out a little bit different depending on the color of the Bernat Blanket because depending on the color, it was either softer or a little bit, I don't like working with Bernat Blanket yarn. I don't like it. Um, I used to years ago, but I don't now. Um, anyway, so some of these came out different. So these are my medium size ones. So here's the orange. And yes, I used like bug eyes on them and I love them. There's my orange one. And you'll see what I mean. Like this one, the tentacles were a little bit more curly cue, whereas these were a little bit like that. And it was the same exact pattern, the same exact count, everything. This one is the sparkle one. So I've got a sparkle one and then another sparkle one, the yellow and I just love these tentacles. I love these tentacles. I just love them. Um, any patterns that I used, if it was something that I didn't just whip up, I will put in the description box below. I just can't remember them right now. This is the safety yellow one. Now this one was plush yarn. This one was Big Twist plush. And honestly, I think I'm gonna go with that instead of Bernat Blanket because it is in fact a little bit thicker, which makes for bigger stuff. And um, like you can, you can see he's, I mean, not a, okay, this was a bad example. He's not a ton bigger, but he is in real life. He is. Um, and it's so much softer than Bernat blanket. I'm totally, now I see why everybody loves plush yarn, the a big twist plush. And it's hard to find. Like sometimes they're, they're, they're sold out of Joanne's. Um, and then this one was the pink one, but see how much tighter it's because the it was like this one was one of the ones that wasn't as soft and it was so much tighter. It's crazy how different they are. And then this one was the green sparkle one. And some of these I put the eyes where the pattern said to do it. And then other ones I put them a row higher. And I like the row higher ones. Anyway, so okay, so those are my medium sized octopi. And then I have my large ones, which were done with big twist. And unfortunately, the ones that I'm showing you, I only have one of each color because I was trying to just get whatever I could get done, done. And I was like, okay, at least I'll have one of each color. I'll know which ones sell and I'll remake them. And then when I have the time, I'll make more for my inventory. But right now, this is all I have time to do. So I made large ones in, in the um, uh, Loops and Threads Sweet Snuggles, which is one of my favorite th uh, yarns to make. And that's where my bees come in and they're larger. I know someone who was saying 
that, oh, well, I don't think that it's that much larger than Bernat Blanket, so I'm not going to worry about it. And I let her know, I'm telling you, my bees come out a lot larger with the Sweet Snuggles than it does with Bernat Blanket, and they really do. Um, so look at this mint green one, and then the big tentacles. Look at the tentacles, I love the tentacles. But you can see, this is Bernat Blanket, and this is Sweet Snuggles. So, um, so these are my large ones. Then I've got the pink one with the tentacles. And then I've got the purple. This was like the purple and purple. Um, this one was on clearance actually. So I got a bunch of it. And then this one, see the eyes, these eyes were actually smaller. I don't know what I was thinking. And I would, I would have liked to have done it a row higher, but with the tentacles and then this yellow one with the tentacles. So those are my large, um, and like when, I, when I sell, what is nice is when I, um, like the part that I put away to, um, replenish the yarn, like the, the cost that I do for the actual, um, the cost of all the materials, then I can go ahead and get more. And if I have any left, I'll go ahead and make it in whatever I have left and then I can get new colors. Well, that's actually where the where the markup will help because the markup will allow me to buy more colors or more whatever versus, you know, just being stuck and not being able to do that. So um, I know I said I was going to not put this stuff away, but I'm talking to you also. So anyway, one more bin and it's, it's only my bees. There's not that many of them. So um, it won't take that long. What is that? Okay, my cheeky froggies. I love my pencils. Um, actually, yeah, I have an outside sale for one pencil, which I keep forgetting. I have to call him and and get him to choose which one he wants. It's for his girlfriend. Okay, so let's do this last bin. These are my bees. Now, my sparkle bees, for some reason, always come out just a tad smaller than my regular bees, which makes no sense to me because I'm adding an extra strand of, even though it's a thin strand, an extra strand of yarn. I use, like I said, Sweet Snuggles, um, and I for my sparkle ones, I add um, the Pixie Dust. It's Premier Pixie Dust. So I'm adding a super thin extra strand of um, sparkle yarn, but my bees always come out smaller. And I don't, it feels like, like the tension is different with trying to get it, like it makes it rougher. So it, it makes it smaller, um, not by much, but enough. Um, so this is one of my yellow sparkle bees. And this is what I'm saying. This is with um, Sweet Snuggles. So it comes out pretty big. And my tension isn't like crazy tight, but this is one that you can't, you're not gonna be able to see. Oh, you can see some sparkle. And then those are the eyeballs. Um, so that's my one B and normally I do the white, um, um, uh, wings, but, um, I, uh, decided to go ahead and change up the colors a little, which I'm going to check, um, Rose's pattern that she uses for the wings because I, I'm not really thrilled with these because the way that I have to end up attaching them. So that's the eyes for that, the holographic. So that's one of my, and I know I have like Z calls it the, um, the San Andreas fault line when it comes here, but I just found another video that shows how to do it where you don't have that. But anyway, so this is a non sparkle bee. Oh, and these wings kind of went off on the side. And I realized that after I had already like cut everything off and everything. So as you can see, there's a slight difference in size, not drastically, but it is, and they're not as thick this way sometimes. But you can see the difference in size now from the sparkle on the left and the non-sparkle on the right. And I don't understand it. it. That's how it's always been. And I even try to loosen my grip um, or my tension and it doesn't make a difference. And then here's one of my standard ones. Sorry, these guys are a little flat because um, they were in the bin. But yeah, and that one has holographic eyes too. And then I made this purple one with the... Um, yellow wings and then these guys and I realized and these have sparkle wings but I realized when I I was watching a market prep video and um someone was charging like for their sitting bee which is little sits in the palm of your hand they were charging twenty dollars for it I was like dude I can charge like fifty five dollars then for like this one I don't 
But I was like, how? And, and she sells out of her visa at every market almost. Or close to selling out. And I'm like, I don't understand it. That is like a crazy expensive bee. Um, but, you know, I mean, if it works for her, it works for her. I mean, you know, more power to her. But anyway, so this is everything that I made in two weeks from signing up to the market and actually doing the market or when I'm going to be doing the market. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of stuff. And I, I, I'm telling you, I was crocheting as well, uh, like all the time. Um, the next market so far, I'm, I'm trying to do one for October 5th. Um, and then I already have one booked for October. I think it's 26th, 27th. It's the last weekend of the month. But, um, now I have a baseline at least to go off of. And then I can go ahead and make more, like a, a couple of Halloween ones I want to do and stuff like that. Anyway, so that's my market prep stuff. Going forward, I'm not necessarily going to have to show you all of this stuff again. Even if I sold some and I remade it, I don't have to show you that. Um, I'll just show you anything new I'm adding to this. So this is a little bit longer than I would have expected. But again, I'm showing you everything because everything was new or almost everything. So anyway, thanks so much. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get a couple of clips at the market and then I'll do, I'll add a quick recap, just letting you know what I sold and you know, stuff that I may have learned. All right. I'll talk to you guys. Well, in a lot, like in a couple days for me, but in like a second for you. Okay. Bye. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Natalie with Natalie's Closet and we are at my first market in many years and my first one up here in Illinois in the Chicagoland area. So I'm just going to take you across. I didn't do a video beforehand. Actually, this is everything that I made in the last two weeks. Okay, not really. The blankets and the shawl are not, but everything else I made in the last two weeks because I booked this two weeks ago with having nothing and did this all in two weeks. So, um, we've got the big bees, which you guys know I go big. So, go big or go home. So, we've got the big bees and then we've got the gummy worms. Aren't these cute? They're so adorable. I love, actually, this was kind of Mr. Boyfriend's um, uh, idea when I found, we found this yarn. And then we just kind of did it this way. And then I've got the two big lovies. I've got a bunch of scrunchies. I have some here and the same ones on that side. I'll be right with you. Oh, you're, you're good. And then I've got three different size octopi. I've got the larger ones, the medium ones, and then the little ones. This is as small as I go. That's just too small already. Um, and then this little baby one was a tester one that I tried out with the yarn and he's just too small. So he's just by himself. <laughs> then I got the booty frog with the little butt. Um, and these are the stingray. They've got the bottom, different um, bottoms. This one is, you know, blue and yellow, you put it in. Um, and then all these lovies. And we've got so many other stuff that I don't love, you know, the little guys at home. Um, I think I showed you guys. I got like 65 of them for like $15 in one bag. It's crazy. Um, and then more scrunchies, like I said. Of course, I love this one because it's sparkly. And then, the, um, and then I also made this banana and these pencils in the last two weeks. Um, you guys have seen this blanket many times over the last little while, and then I've had this one, and this scarf, and this scarf have been ones that have been in my inventory. Oh, and this baby doll blanket that's been in my inventory, but these hats you guys those i made a few a few weeks ago and then this shawl you guys know is my adeline my shandy with um expression fiber arts adeline shawl so this is the first time i think i've had it out for sale like at a market type thing so we were only expecting to have one eight foot table and we got here and it was two eight foot tables so my six foot fitted tablecloths are now stretched to the max over each table but thankfully I made what I made which wasn't planned to all go out 
at once, but now it's all out. So anyway, we got all these, Mr. Boyfriend is like amazing and he, you know how he finds stuff like crazy, either free or like for like 50 cents or something. We have like all these fixtures and stuff for things that he found. Look at this amazingness. Look at this. It's solid wood and it doesn't spin. Well, this spins, but I think it's because it's loose right now. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's like two slices of wood that was finished and onto this, it's amazing. So, anyway, well, I would say wish us luck, but you're not here live for me to tell, ask you guys to do that. But maybe in spirit, you guys are with us. And uh, this is on a Thursday night, 6 to 9. It's a girls' night out at a VFW uh, not too far from us. So, yeah, anyway. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. I'll come back every so often during the night um, and let you know how things are going. And then I'll do like a quick recap afterwards at some point um, to kind of bring it together. I don't know how much detail I'm going to go into, like how much this sold for this and this sold for this. I may just say overall I made this much. Um, but yeah, so wish us luck. <laughs> okay, talk to you later. Okay, guys, so quick update. I guess I should do it this way so I'm kind of uh, covering their faces anyway um so it's 10 after 7 I'm sorry it's 20 after 7 and the um market started at 6 it's like I said at a VFW it's kind of slow but we've sold two uh stingrays and three medium sized octopi and one small octopi. I'm sorry, three medium and one baby, which was the prototype. Um, and then uh, one small one. Now, the thing that I love about my octopi, and it's no secret, it's a pattern I got off, uh, or on YouTube, a tutorial. And the thing that everybody has loved about these octopi is the tentacles. The, like, the moving of the tentacles versus just the stubs or the nubs of tentacles. So that's what I loved about it. And that's why I decided to make them. So yeah, that's, that's been a big thing. So. I'm all for it. <laughs> anyway, so we've had a few sales. We've had a lot of people looking. But anyway, yeah, so that's the update so far. We'll see how it goes. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hi, guys, so welcome back. So what did you think? I know there wasn't much footage at the market, but um, yeah, so it was cool. It was, it was a bit slow. Um, I think this was the first one for this particular... Um, like a uh, marketing group that did it there. Um, it was at the uh, VFW Lodge, um, not far from us. And um, it was a great experience. It was a great, um, <laughs> um, first time experience to get our feet wet. And we learned a bunch of stuff um, and uh, we learned about the Wisconsin um, Fiber Festival, which this is future, Natalie, I didn't do it right afterwards, um, or like right after the show. It A lot of stuff has happened already. Um, we actually have already gone to the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival. And um, yes, I realize I'm wearing the same outfit. I actually did that intentionally thinking it would be good to do. And then I'll, that's what I just realized. I'm like, why did you do that? Because this is obviously different times. But anyway, whatever. I thought I was doing good by having it like uh, have some sort of, you know. Um, anyway, so a lot of stuff has happened. We've gone to Wisconsin Sheep and Wool. We learned, you know, a bunch there. Um, I also have, um, oh, crap. I wanted to tell you guys something about the Oct pie or maybe not um but one thing i want to tell you guys if you guys do look for vendor of uh, vendor events online whether it's on facebook which is a big thing or anywhere else which i don't know where else there is because i haven't researched that but if 
it is um like i'm part of a um a northern illinois market and craft fair like group and there are a lot of people that post uh, events that are coming up so that you can sign up as a vendor, which is great. However, there are a lot of scam artists out there, and I almost got hit by two. One of them was actually while I was on a live with you guys, um, and the other one was after that. Thankfully, that one, something didn't seem right. It was just before I was going to send the money, and something didn't seem right. And I went ahead, and I looked, and, and everything was so similar. Like, the email was .com instead of .org, but everything else was the same. Um, so if you didn't really pay attention to that, you can get stuck. But what they do is if you comment on that post in whatever group or whatever saying you're interested, what they do is if you have, if depending on what your security levels are on Facebook, they can find your email address or they'll go ahead and private message you and say, hey, um, saw that you were interested and they'll start a conversation and then whatever. Now, a lot of the vendors know or market people know this. And so they'll put on there, I am the only contact, do not respond to anybody else. Um, here is my email address and whatever, which I did my, I did check uh, everything and whatever. But like I said, the email address was the difference was .com versus .org. Otherwise everything was the same. And so I was like, oh, okay. So just be careful when you're trying to sign up for markets. Don't get scammed. They are out there big time. These market people have told me when I've, re I'm like, I'm so tired of this. I don't know who to trust, what to trust, anything. And I just want to be able to sign up for markets. And they're like, you have no idea how many spammers we are deleting every day that are trying to get money from people claiming that they are, you know, us and that here's the amount for the table and this, that, and the other, and all the add-ons and whatever. So just be careful. That is one thing I, I do want to say. Be careful, be vigilant, and just do all of your research. Make sure, like the one market that I signed up for at the end of October, I made sure that the woman, because also if they're saying that they only take like Cash App and Venmo or Zelle or PayPal, that's a lot of time. That can be a, a red flag that they may be spammers. However, there are legitimate Ven or market people that do take that also, but a lot of them are switching to only taking check or a cashier's check or money order, but having it sent in, or you can take it to them if they're local enough. Um, but just, you know, be careful. But this one for the end of October, she reached out to me, we were going back and forth and she said, you can pay by cash app, Venmo, whatever. And I was like, okay, I need to make sure I'm doing my due diligence here. So I went to the company's website. I verified that she is, in fact, whatever the position it is, that the phone number was legitimately them, that the email address was legitimate. Like, I was doing all kinds of crazy homework for this. But you need to do that because even if even if it's a $25 show, that's still $25 out of your pocket and you're not booked for the show. So just, just be careful. Just pay attention to that. Um, okay, so as far as the market, we learned some stuff. We met some people. Um, and I mean, it was rather slow, so we, there weren't a lot of sales, but we did sell, I think it was like seven items. I don't have my book with me, but, um, I know we sold, um, two stingrays. Uh, we sold my prototype octopus, which was only $2. It was a little tiny one. And it was the one that had the little nubs for the, um, tentacles, um, $2. And she bought two medium sized, um, octopi. Uh, no, she she got three of them, um, three octopi, medium size octopi, the little baby one. We sold two stingray, and um, I think that was it. I don't. We didn't sell anything else. Um, having Mr. Boyfriend there was amazing um, because I mean, and it was funny because we got there and I don't have business cards. I we were we're in the process of um, redesigning my logo and stuff like that, so I didn't have business cards. I'm like, what are we gonna do? And so before the show, uh, Mr. Boyfriend just went ahead. He on on the computer he wrote out all the information that we need on on there. He went to the library, he printed it out, we cut it out, and then we're like, wait a minute. So we went ahead and we taped it onto the bags, which my 
my plan is to have my sticker on every bag. And the purpose for that is, is when people are walking around the market, they'll have a, they'll, they'll see a sticker and hopefully there's a bunch of people walking around with my, my bag and my sticker. And they'll be like, Oh, where did you find that? Oh, Oh, Oh. And the people don't have to forget where they were. Um, they now they know, but anyway, so, um, we went ahead and I was taping all of these contact, all the contact information onto the bags. And so I was like, Mr. Boyfriend, would you mind setting up the table for me? And he like for a second was like, what, really me? You want me? Yeah, you know, but we're so very much alike and, and have the same thought, you know, the same ideas and stuff. I wasn't worried about it. And it was amazing. It came out amazing. The thing is, is we came in there and they're like, oh, you want two eight foot tables or two eight foot tables instead of one. And I was like, I don't know if I have enough inventory to be able to fully, you know, thankfully I had the, the inventory that I have that I just showed that I showed you the, earlier in the video was enough to fully cover two eight foot tables. Now, the thing is, is we got, we got the stretchy tablecloths for six foot tables because that's what I've been accustomed to is six foot tables. But a lot of, most people are doing eight foot tables now if they provide the tables. So, um, anyway, so we stretched that out. We were able to at least cover it. It didn't pull down to the bottom, but, um, at least cover the tables, but, um, we were able to f fully fill two eight foot tables with what I had. So that was amazing. And serendipity came with me. Those of you that are new, serendipity is my, um, metal, um, uh, bodice, uh, mannequin. Anyway, so serendipity was there. She was showcasing some stuff and we had some other things on there. So it was awesome. We learned a lot, which was great. And, um, yeah, we got our feet wet and now it's like, let's go. So I still haven't found one for, well, right now it's the week before October 5th weekend. So I haven't found anything for October 5th. Um, so I'm th wondering if that's not a sign saying, don't do this. You need to, you need to make at one, you need to make extra or you need to make Halloween stuff and maybe some fall stuff. And two, you need to, you know, like make more of your baseline inventory um, because I have a two day event at the end of October and then on November 2nd, I have another market and then the first weekend or it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the first, um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday of December, I have a three day event. And so, and I'm still looking for one to, for the end of October, possibly. So it's like, okay, maybe that's a sign saying, don't do the October 5th. Don't push to do that one you have a couple of multiple day events and you need to make sure that you have enough to be able to support that because there's not really a lot of time in between to be able to make more stuff. So I'm, I'm not going to push for October 5th unless the couple people that I approached about it happen to come back to me and say, Oh, actually the organizer for November 2nd also is the organizer for October an October 5th event. And she knows to let me know if anybody drops out. She has two crocheters. Um, one that makes similar stuff to me. So she's like, it's only if she happens to drop out that I would have. And I was like, that's fine. Just keep me on the list. She's like, okay. So anyway, um, so that was what we sold. It was rather slow. And I did donate something to the door prize that they had going for people that came in. Um, so, and that was, as it turns out, that was stuff that were like really prototype things, not things that I would typically have in, in my stuff. So no big deal. I didn't replenish it. I didn't even have it in my square as inventory. So yeah, so that's that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and, uh, yeah, so sorry that this is so future. Um, but we had a lot of fun at Wisconsin Fiber Festival. You guys well, I don't know if you will have seen that first or if you will be seeing this first. Not sure which way that's going to go. But yeah, so have a great day. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll talk to you guys later. Remember, for every season, there's a reason to crochet. Love, hugs, and prayers to everybody. Extra prayers for those who need it. If you need extra prayers but don't want to share publicly, email me at natalies.closet at yahoo.com. We will add you to our private prayer list. And if you don't mind me sharing it publicly but anonymously, let me know that too and I'll do that. Um... Be positive. Miley says hi and bye to her peeps. Mr. Boyfriend and my mom say hello also and goodbye. And my mom, as always, says thank you so much for all the continued thoughts and prayers for her. And um, also thank you for the thoughts, continued thoughts and prayers for us. We really appreciate it. And I just remembered what I wanted to tell you about the octopi. Um, I actually had several people say that they really liked the, the like, um, uh, what you call it on them, but 
yeah so anyway have a great day i'll talk to you guys soon okay bye i love you guys thank you again for all the support you guys are amazing okay bye